In this tutorial, you'll learn 1. How to install WAMP on Windows 2. Efficiency and debugging tips 3. How to build a simple full-stack web application Timestamps are in the description below OK, first thing we're going to do is open up your favourite browser Type in WAMP server And we're going to pick the official website Choose your correct language and we've got a couple of options, 64-bit and 32-bit. Easiest way to find which one you have is type in CMD, command line, type in system info and the following command. I'll put this in the description below. In my case, it's 64-bit. I'm going to download that. I've already downloaded my copy, so I'm going to save you the pain of watching it download. Next, we're going to open up our downloads folder, select the installer. Choose the language, accept the terms and conditions, click next, and we come across this error. This is quite a common one, uh, it basically just means you need uh, additional Visual C++ packages. So we're going to go back to the website, scroll down, and click all redistributable packages. I'm going to save this. Once again, I've saved it locally, so we don't need to watch it download. We're going to open the zip folder. Now we have the files, all we need to do now is find out which one it is that we need. So we'll rerun the installer. We'll go through the steps up to the point where we see the error. You can see it's 2022. You can see this is the only one with a reference to 2022. So we're going to install each one. Simply run it, agree to the terms and conditions and install, close the installer, close the error and exit out of the WAMP installer. We're going to rerun the installer, go through the same steps again and this time we've managed to get through without an error. In your case it might not be the 2022, you might need one of the other ones but it should be in the list. As long as you install it, you should get to the same screen and we should have WAMP up and running in no time. It will ask you if you want to change your preferred browser or editor. I'll say no for now and I'll show you how to change that later. Now the setup is complete, we can close this and close some of our windows. You should see the desktop shortcut, either double click this or open. WAMP server will start all its services. You can double check its status by hovering over the W icon. And now you have a working WAMP server. Let's do a couple of things to check our environment is working. First, open a web browser and check we can see the default installation page. This is a good reference page, although a lot of the information here can be found by left clicking or right clicking the W icon in the system tray. Next, we'll go to our WAMP folder, enter the www directory and make a copy of the index page, then rename it to something like WAMP underscore info. Then we'll take our index page and put in our first line of code, not forgetting the colon at the end. Now, when we revisit our main page, or the root of the website, you'll now see the changes. Before we move on to our first full stack mini project, I'm going to cover a couple of points I skipped over earlier, and that's changing your browser and editor post install. If you're finding this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing. It not only helps the channel grow, but also ensures you stay updated with all my new web development content. Changing the browser is nice and easy. Open WAMP settings, then choose WAMP server browser and select an option. Another simple tip is to set your WAMP directory as a quick access shortcut like this. Changing the editor. With our WAMP directory open, we'll edit the WAMP manager config file with the default editor. Select and copy the editor and log viewer entries. Paste them next to the originals and comment them out with a semicolon. This is so we can revert back to the original editor if we wanted. It's not bad practice to use this method to comment out old code until you're happy with the new. This will give you an easy way to compare or return to your previous entry. Now we will open up the start menu Locate our editor, and in my case, Visual Studio Code. Right click the icon, select more, and open the file location. Right click again, and select properties. From the properties window, select and copy the target. 
head back to your WAMP manager config file, select the path for the uncommented editor and paste. Then repeat this for the log viewer. Now we'll save the file and refresh the config via the WAMP icon. Once all the services are running again, we'll click any of the config files and they'll open in your chosen editor. This will work for all logs and config files. Now let's get on to the mini project. I want to show you how quickly you can get a full stack project up and running by leveraging ChatGPT. It's the perfect tool to get us started and we'll discuss any issues as we go and hopefully it'll leave us with a working project that you can refine and adapt. Feel free to pause, but I'll put the prompt in the description. You'll see I've asked to use a modal. This is a bootstrap component that makes editing nice and clear, especially on busy screens. Okay, let's access phpMyAdmin, our database front end. In production, access from the internet is not a good idea as it holds all your data. And if you had to, it would be best to disable it when not in use, only allow access via your own IP address and ensure the connection is HTTPS. This is a topic for another video, but it's a great tool to help us visualize the database while running it locally. Step one is to create our database and table. Select our first snippet, select the SQL tab, paste and click go. Copy our second snippet, which is the actual table. Ensure you have the project tracker database. Select the SQL tab, paste and click go. That's our database sorted. Let's create a folder in our www directory where you'll find your main index PHP page and call it project underscore manager. Avoid using spaces as this will cause linking issues and you'll end up with a percentage 20 sign in your URL, which isn't the prettiest. Step two is to create a separate database connection file. This way, multiple scripts can use it. Let's copy the code. We'll open our text editor, in my case, Visual Studio Code, and create the file db.php and paste our entry. We'll change the details. Localhost will remain the same, but if you were using a dedicated MySQL server, you would put in its IP address or its network name. We only have the default root and no password. I think this goes without saying that it's insecure. In production, you'd set up a user with restricted permissions and a strong password. We'll head back to GPT and copy our backend PHP script. This script runs on the server itself. When you or the front end script interacts with it using AJAX, which is a technique used to communicate with the server, it will allow us to dynamically update our web page without needing to refresh the whole page. Finally, we'll copy our front end script to create the index.php file for our project manager directory. As index pages are the default page for a directory, by naming it as index.php, it will not show up in the URL unless typed, which keeps the URL clean and user friendly. Now we have all the code in place, let's have a look at our site by visiting it localhost forward slash project dash manager. Hmm, that doesn't look particularly stylish. Let's debug it by using the inspector. This is available on most browsers. In my case, I'm using Chrome. To debug, the console is the best place to start and straight away we can see some errors. If we look closer, it's logging a 404 error, which means the page cannot be found and the missing file relates to Bootstrap. If we look at the Bootstrap reference, copy the link and paste it in a browser, we can see that the CSS file cannot be found. It's likely GPT has picked up an old reference, so let's fix this. The best place to check the links or CDNs as they're referred to is to go to the Bootstrap official website. Here, we can see that their recommended links differ from ours, so let's use them. First, we will copy the CSS reference and paste that into our script. And then, to ensure compatibility, we'll find the JS or JavaScript reference and repeat the process. Using CDNs on your website can speed up loading times by caching content closer to the users globally. This improves reliability, reduces server load and can potentially lower your costs. However, if you're hosting on a local network and you lose con internet connectivity, a reference to a local copy of the library is a good fallback. Now we've made our changes, let's head back to the web page and hit refresh. And now our errors have gone and it looks like Bootstrap is handling both the styling and some of the JavaScript elements correctly. Let's try our application out. Let's create two entries to test it out. Well, that seems to be working okay. 
database is storing the data and then the JavaScript is using Ajax to pull the entry from the database and display it on the front page. Let's test the sort function. OK, so that's not working too well. I suppose you could say on one hand, if I wrote the code myself, I might not have hit this error. However, ChatGPT is very willing for change, so let's give it a more logical way of sorting something. With this method, each element will have its own order record, which makes sense to me and also makes the code easier to read. So we have three amendments to make. The first is to alter the database table to include the additional sorting column. Once again, we copy the code and then we paste it into the SQL box and click go. Had we been using the MySQL command line on a server, we would have been pasting this at the MySQL prompt, but I'll cover this in another video. Now copy the updated backend script, which will handle the new variable and sort column, then overwrite the existing script. And finally, we'll copy just a portion of the code between the CDN links. That way we can preserve them. If I had fed the updated links into GPT, it would have added them and we could have just copied the whole script. Something to bear in mind. Now that's done. I've added another project and we'll give it another try. This time the order is changing and when we refresh the page, the sort order is maintained. If we take a look at the database table, we can also see this is now populating with our entries and the sort order is recorded. And this is a basic full stack application. If you can support me by hitting the subscribe button and liking the video, it would mean a lot and really help my channel. Thanks all.